underwater navigation. In this module, you will perfect the knowledge you require to navigate underwater correctly. You will discover the techniques for measuring distances and those for navigating in a straight line. You will learn how to use transits. And finally, you will learn how to follow routes with and without a compass, even in a current. Navigation Navigating means following a course while knowing your present position, where you left from, and where you are going. In the water, as in other situations, you may be distracted and not concentrating on the course you are following, and consequently get lost. This happens particularly when we are in an area that is new to us. In fact, the main factors that influence the chances of us getting lost are the limited knowledge of the area and the lack of concentration while following a route. To prevent this happening, we apply techniques that entail the use of special instruments or natural reference points. The combination of these techniques is defined using the term navigation. Knowing your position makes you feel safer and reduces the uneasiness caused by the sensation of finding yourself in an unfamiliar world. Also, establishing the route to follow beforehand reduces the possibility of divers becoming separated. In order to navigate underwater, you need to know three important factors. The distance covered, the direction you are going in, and the depth. Measuring distance. One of the methods regularly used for measuring distance is the time it takes to cover a given distance. Underwater, this is not a very accurate parameter, in that the speed we travel is never the same, particularly because, during a dive, we often stop to look at something. You should also know that a diver usually moves about half a meter, 1.5 feet a second, finning at a normal rate. Another way of measuring distance is by referring to the fall of pressure in the cylinder. In this case, the speed is linked to the diver's respiratory rate. This method is also rather imprecise, but in some particular situations it becomes indispensable as it firmly links the distance covered to the reserve of air available. An example is the application of the rule of thirds, a third of the air for going, a third for coming back, a third for the reserve. A way of measuring distances that even novice divers find easy to use is to count the fin cycles. A fin cycle is intended as a complete stroke of both fins. For instance, taking the position of one of the feet as a reference, a fin cycle is considered complete when that foot returns to its original position. A more precise method for measuring distance is that of using outstretched arms. Distances can be calculated by using the measurement between the tips of your fingers with outstretched arms. This method is precise but of little use when measuring long distances, as the diver would have to move very slowly and always stay in contact with the sea floor. Clearly, the most precise method is that of using a line, preferably wound onto a reel with lengths marked on it. However, this method also means that you have to return to the starting point to recover the line so it is only useful when measuring distances along a reciprocal course. Moving around in the blue. In order to move along in a straight line, even if you haven't got a compass, you can use natural reference points. At first, there may seem to be very few, but with experience, you will be able to recognize various types. Let's analyze the worst scenario. You are swimming at a depth of 5 meters, 15 feet, and returning to the boat, and you cannot see the bottom. What is more, you cannot come to the surface to check that you are heading in the right direction. If the dive is taking place mid-morning or mid-afternoon, you will certainly be able to see the position of the sun through the surface. This is an excellent reference point. Just swim along while keeping the sun in the same position. 
The rays of sunlight that penetrate the water can also easily be seen in the blue. They are parallel to each other and stay at a constant angle. If the sun is not visible, you could observe the direction of the waves and use them to help you in your orientation. But what about diving at night? In this case, we can use the position of the moon. Natural reference points underwater. There are numerous elements that we can use as reference points under the water. The most evident is the conformation of the seabed. The depth generally increases as you move away from the shore. Observing the angle of the direction you are traveling in and the sloping seabed will help you identify the direction of the return leg. For example, in the case of a vertical wall, if on the outward leg it was on your left, it should be on the right on the return leg. It is simpler still if the dive is made in a canyon or an underwater gorge. The sea floor is usually strewn with boulders, coral and benthic formations, alternating with smooth level areas and these are all useful as conspicuous points to help establish precise reference points. It is also important to observe these reference points from the opposite direction so you can identify them on your return leg. You will discover that the same rock or boulder may look entirely different from the other side and may not be so easy to recognize. The movement of the water can also help determine a direction, for example, in respect to a current. In fact, it is possible to use the angulation with the direction of a current to establish the return course. But even if there is no current at the time, it can still help you. In fact, many animals exploit the current to get their food more easily and adapt to the dominant currents in the area they inhabit. The large sea fans, for example, always arrange their fans perpendicular to the direction of the dominant current. If in a certain area the fans are all parallel to each other, you can use these to establish direction of reference even if there is no current. Other movements of the water that can help you navigate in shallow water are the waves and the surf, which in shallow waters always go towards the shore. Waves also cause ripples in the sand. These are parallel to the shore and get closer together as they get nearer the shore. Alignments and Transits It is possible to use natural conspicuous points to swim in a straight line. To do this, you need to use alignments, meaning several points lined up that give you a certain and accurate direction. Having identified the first and second conspicuous points aligned along a theoretical course, begin to swim towards the first point. Before you reach the first point, you need to identify a third point in the same direction that lines up with the second, and so on. The alignments not only allow you to swim in a straight line, but also enable you to find a particular dive site again, for example, by taking transits. To determine the position of a dive site, just find two alignments in two directions at an angle to each other. It is more accurate when the angle between the two alignments is 90 degrees. 
accuracy decreases rapidly as the angle between the two alignments reaches 45 degrees. Below this value, the accuracy is not acceptable. Obviously, the same is true for angles greater than 135 degrees. To establish the alignments, you need to use permanent and easily identifiable objects, such as the tops of mountains, electricity pylons, large aerials, and so on. The greater the distance between the two objects, the more accurate the alignments are. Simple Routes When navigating without instruments, it is best to make a simple reciprocal course, meaning the return leg is the same as the outward leg, but in the opposite direction. If the visibility is good, it is also possible to make a rectangular route, with the return leg parallel to the outward leg. To make a rectangular route in a clockwise direction, you must swim in one direction, looking not only at the conspicuous points in the direction you are going in, but also at those to your right. Extending your right arm enables you to estimate, with a certain degree of precision, a 90-degree change in direction. Having completed the first leg, extend your right arm, and looking along it, see a conspicuous point in that direction. Turn 90 degrees in a clockwise direction and swim towards it. By turning 90 degrees in a clockwise direction once again, you will be facing in the opposite direction of your outward leg, but at a certain distance from it, allowing you to explore new areas. When you turn right, you cover a stretch while still maintaining visual contact with the conspicuous points of your outward leg. Underwater compasses and navigational instruments. Another technique of underwater navigation, particularly valid in environments with no reference points, consists of using instruments that aid navigation. A compass and a depth gauge enable us to deal with many situations, transforming the anxiety of not knowing into awareness of knowing where you are and the safety of being able to return to your starting point. For example, by just using a depth gauge, it is possible to follow a bathymetric route on a sloping seabed. Staying at the same depth for both the outward and return leg ensures that the return leg will be very close to the outward one and take you back to the starting point. Adding a compass enables you to deal with most situations. Modern diving compasses consist of a magnetized rotating face that feels the effect of the Earth's magnetic field and are immersed in a liquid which deadens the movements and steadies the rotation. All this is contained in a case with a transparent window so you can see the rows and read the direction. A line, known as a lubber line, is marked on the window and this represents your direction of travel. There is usually a viewer on the casing and this allows you to read the direction while holding the compass at eye level. On the upper part, a rotating bezel is used to memorize the position of the compass rows, so you can stay on a constant course or vary it. Having established a direction to set the compass, it is enough to just rotate the upper bezel so that it coincides with the north mark of the compass rows. So to stay on course, just swim while keeping this as a constant reference point. Navigating with a compass can be very precise, but it must be used correctly. One of the errors to avoid is that of starting the course in the wrong way by not aligning the lubber line and the direction of travel correctly. This lack of alignment can occur, for example, because the compass is positioned incorrectly. 
One of the most common ways of using a compass worn on the wrist is to extend your arms in front of you and then bend the elbow with the compass and take hold of the elbow of the arm without the compass. In this way, the lubber line is aligned with the extended arm and, consequently, with your body. Instead, when using a compass mounted on console, you have to hold the instrument and extend both arms in front of you or rest both elbows at the side of your body. In this way, a perfect triangle is formed and the lover line is aligned with your body. It is possible to use a combination of navigational techniques, combining the use of the compass with natural reference points and the depth gauge. The route is calculated mathematically. To obtain a new heading after each rotation in a clockwise direction, you must add to the previous angle of rotation. On the contrary, you must subtract when turning in an anti-clockwise direction. Let's look at a practical example. Starting with a heading of 040 degrees, by adding 90 degrees, the second leg will be 130 degrees. So set the bezel to 130 degrees and turn until the compass is aligned to this value. You can now swim in this direction. With another 90 degrees, the next heading will be 220 degrees. Another 90 degrees gives us a heading of 310 degrees. Repeat the maneuver. With another right turn, so adding another 90 degrees, we get 400 degrees, which is not marked on the compass. But by subtracting a complete rotation of 360 degrees, we get our initial heading of 040 degrees. With a compass, we can make complex routes. Obviously, we must measure the distances of each leg using one of the methods we have already mentioned. In a similar way to how we made the alignments, it is possible to fix a position with two bearings. Just identify two conspicuous points and, using a compass, determine the heading to follow to get there. Precision of the compass An expert underwater navigator is able to maintain a precise course to more or less 5 degrees. However, many factors can influence this accuracy. First of all, there is the influence caused by the presence of metallic masses and electrical circuits. If you place a compass near a large metal depth gauge, an electric dive light or a knife, it could give you a false reading. It is important to establish the distance at which there is no longer interference between the instrument and the compass. Other metallic masses that can also cause the compass to give false readings are cameras, video cameras and wrecks. Finally, a significant effect can be caused by drift due to a cross current. Imagine that you want to swim from point A to point B in a slight cross current that will cause you to drift to one side. In reality, the drift effect of the current will make you arrive at a point downstream in respect to your planned point of arrival. In practice, to get from point A to point B, you need to make corrections and swim at a slight angle into the current. Making the dive. The navigation exercises are quite complex, so it is best to try them out on land before you make the dive. Ideally, the navigator's head should be covered with something, a towel for example, that prevents them seeing anything except the compass. The routes you make are those that you will have to do in the water, the only difference is that the distances will be measured in step cycles rather than fin cycles.
The first thing you have to do in the water is measure the distance of your fin cycle by swimming along a line of a known length. While doing this, also measure the time and the drop in cylinder pressure. This information will give you a complete valuation of distance, time and consumption. The average distance covered by every fin cycle is obtained by dividing the covered distance by the total number of fin cycles counted. You will then go on to the navigation techniques. First of all, you must make a reciprocal course without a compass. You will then repeat the exercise, obviously in a different direction, using a compass. Finally, you will make a rectangular or square root of a defined size, applying all the techniques you have studied in this chapter. Happy diving!